Okay, Jonathan, you can go ahead and get started. We're now live. Perfect. All right, welcome everybody to our September meeting of SPAC. It's been way too long, so it's good to see everybody else uh, again. Um, I guess we'll jump right in um, and just ask if we have any declarations of conflict of interest for anything on the agenda this evening. Seeing none, um, we're just, because it's been so long, we're just, and because we're still doing our, our Zoom thing, um, we're just going to go over some kind of rules of procedure for, for hosting these meetings online here. Um, so I'm just going to remind everybody um, that uh, in order to operate efficiently, um, it'd be nice if everybody could be muted during the meeting unless they're talking, um, just to help reduce the amount of feedback. Um, all web cameras for committee members need to be turned on. Um, if anybody would wish to indicate that they want to speak, um, there is a raise hand button on the participation list screen, which um, I think is different for everybody, depending on how you have your, your layout set up. But theoretically, it's in the bottom right hand side. Um, and then um, our clerk staff, Melanie, um, can lower the hand uh, once you've been recognized and had your turn to speak. Um, the meetings are recorded and streamed online to the city's YouTube channel. Um, in the event of a connection or service interruption that affects quorum, which um, might be possible because we just meet quorum, um, we're allowed to recess for up to 15 minutes to regain quorum. Um, and then if quorum is not achieved after that 15 minutes, um, then we would have to adjourn. Um, moving right along, we don't have any delegations per se in terms of the delegation section tonight, but we do have a bit of a presentation later on. Um, and so getting to our items, actually, sorry, I forgot to say at the start as well, I wanted to welcome Melanie back to being our clerk's liaison. Um, she's filled in in the past and, and done great. And uh, we're happy to have her back as our support again for SBAC. So welcome back, Melanie. All right, so jumping into our items. We have three items on our agenda tonight. Um, and the first one is an overview of the environment and climate change assessment tool. Um, and so uh, can I call on, oh, there you are, Rochelle. Um, I will give you the mic. Great, thanks, Jonathan. Good to see you all again. It's been, it's been many months. Um, and I've been working away on the Climate Lens tool and I wanted to give you guys an update on that. And um, if, if you agree, um, an endorsement of that so that I can uh, move forward with that in November implementation. Um, so I'll show you what I've got. I'm going to share a PowerPoint presentation with you, and then I'm going to flip back and forth, give you a live demo. Um, okay. Oh. Second. I don't know what's going on. Just <laughs> we tested this out earlier, and okay, there we go. Here we go. Okay, so um, if you recall back in 2019, the city of Brantford declared a climate emergency. And within that climate emergency, um, there was direction to staff to develop a tool to quantify all the decisions made at council. So we've been working on that. Uh, and this is what it looks like. So the process for this sort of has uh, two components to it. Um, one is a new staff report section. So any staff report coming uh, to committee or council will have a new section in it called climate and environmental implications. So it'll be right underneath financial implications where um, council will ha have any impact on how much it will cost long-term and uh, operationally. 
Um, and then right underneath that, it will have discussion on any climate change or environmental implications. So that is available to all staff across um, you know, committee meetings, task force meetings, council meetings um, to include discussion in that. Um, the other piece of this is a calculator tool. So to support that section um, and the quantification process, um, we've developed a tool to help staff think through and calculate the emissions and a few other sustainability metrics associated with their projects. So I'm gonna give you a demo of that, but that is really that calculator tool is to support staff um, in putting together information to include in this section. So the calculator tool isn't necessarily supposed to be used or seen by council or the public, um, but I'm gonna give you a, a preview of that. Um, so this is how the new stack report templates will look. So um, if you guys are interested in an issue or looking at uh, council or committee meeting agendas in the future, you should see this new section here titled climate and environmental implications. And that will be uh, the space for staff to discuss uh, any issues related to that, related to their reports. So already that's a great step forward, um, having that section there for staff to start thinking about these issues, knowing that that section's there that they have to address in their next staff report and bringing that information to council to help them make decisions, knowing and having that full transparency of information on uh, climate and environmental impacts and great information for the public to also understand um, those impacts from these staff projects. So the report itself, um, having this new section in it will be open to all staff, as I mentioned, and uh, for all departments to discuss climate and environmental impl implications of their proposal. It's to include positive or negative uh, impacts. Certainly we don't want to know the negative impacts, but it's also a space for staff to talk about positive impacts and ways that they've thought about and mitigated um, environmental or climate change impacts in their proposals. So, you know, it's a place to also, um, you know, celebrate that, uh, that positive change as well. So uh, we hope to, we hope to see a lot of positive things, but certainly there will be negative things to, to discuss as we, as we propose new projects. Um, so these, uh, this report section is meant to sort of bring these issues into the conversation more and provide information and education to council and the public. So it's really starting to build that climate literacy and in that environmental literacy um, at, on council, in the public, in, on staff, to just make sure that we can start to engage in this conversation more and understand like, is one ton of greenhouse gas emissions a lot or the thousand tons of greenhouse gas emissions a lot and start to be able to weigh that more appropriately by having this experience and seeing these numbers in front of us. Um, so the calculator tool itself is, is developed to assist staff in calculating these GHG emissions and other impacts. Um, it also collects in the back end for quarterly summary reports. So that was one of the other requirements of the climate emergency declaration was to do quarterly updates um, to council, uh, sort of summarizing what's been approved in the previous quarter. So we can say, you know, in the previous quarter of this year, uh, council approved X tons of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions, um, just so that the public is aware of, of how we are moving towards our climate change targets. And if we're starting to reduce our approved climate emissions, CO2 emissions. Um, so this is a SharePoint tool that's been developed uh, specifically for staff. So it's an intranet tool that will only be accessible to staff. Um, and that information gets entered in there and a report is emailed to staff with the results. Um, and the scope of this uh, tool is to look at operational emissions only. So this is important to understand right now because uh, this is this is where we are. Um, it doesn't include emissions from construction or embedded carbon emissions associated with, you know, the construction materials used in a project. Um, it's looking exclusively at operational emissions. Um, we may get to a point where we feel more comfortable calculating construction emissions or embedded emissions um, in the future, but right now we wanted to stick with operational emissions. So that's things like if you are proposing a new building, it would be the electricity and natural gas 
um, required to, to heat and operate that building. Um, if you're proposing a new event, for example, like how much electricity do you need? How much waste is that gonna produce? So you're looking at, at those specific emissions and not, um, not the emissions used to construct the project. Um, those impacts can certainly be discussed in more qualify, qualitative way, um, but um, we're not going to try to quantify that at this stage. So primarily we're gonna be looking at greenhouse gas emissions. So that's measured in tons of carbon dioxide equivalent um, from fossil fuels, uh, and what, which is uh, primarily gasoline, diesel, natural gas, and also electricity. There's emissions associated with electricity. Um, and we're gonna try to quantify uh, the tree removal, the impact of tree removal and uh, tree planting. So if you are proposing a big project where you're planting a bunch of trees, you'll be able to, to calculate that negative emissions uh, impact. And that would, be, that would be great to include in a stack report as well. We'll also be looking at other metrics such as wastewater, stormwater and land use change. Oh, it's demo time. So I'm gonna stop sharing that. And I'm gonna share, <laughs> I'm gonna share um, this other tool. So, okay. So this is the tool that's on our CityNet site. Um, doo -doo -doo. Here it is. Okay, can you see that? Okay, so this is what the tool looks like. Um, and then, yeah, just to reiterate, this isn't supposed to be accessible or in the report at all. It's really just a tool for staff to, to use and to calculate uh, their impacts. So they can put in their information about their, their project name. Um, and this will keep track of it for me when I have to do the quarterly update reports that I can see what reports are coming through and, um, and a brief description, what date they're going to be at committee or council. Uh, this tool you add in, uh, so here, I'm gonna do a little, I'll do this police headquarters retrofit. So uh, one of the projects that's happening at the city right now is they're uh, looking to retrofit the police headquarters building. Um, and uh, hopefully we're talking about uh, having a more energy efficient building. So um, they're doing that RFP right now and uh, looking to get some more information on the different costs and uh, energy efficiency scenarios that they can, they can achieve. So, you know, we can, I'm not going to fill in all of this information, but we would be able to put in like a start date. And let's say we're planning for that building to be uh, operational for 30 years, then we would put in a date, you know, 30 years from the start date. And then that will calculate the life cycle emissions associated with it. It'll multiply the annual emissions by the, the years operating. So we have that project info. Then we go into the emissions from energy. So we know we can gather the information, um, the energy usage of the existing building. And let's say we've been talking to the consultant and they're like, okay, we can reduce energy efficiency or energy consumption by 30%. We take those existing values and subtract 30%. So let's say, you know, that would be 700,000 um kilowatt hours a year um they'll use maybe about you know 80,000 cubic meters of natural gas to heat the building um you know no gasoline or diesel fuels required um this is a building project so we'll say that the new building is 80,000 square meters in here we could write a few little uh bits of information about the types of energy efficiency measures that are being implemented say we're using um, you know, LED lighting and a high, high efficiency building envelope and we're putting solar panels on the roof. We could write that in there. Um, we can say, okay, the old building produced uh, 260 tons of carbon dioxide a year. And so this information will allow us to sort of say, this is what it used to do. This is what it's proposed to do. Here's the difference. And here's the emissions that you'll be saving um, over a year and over the life cycle. So you can do similar, you can put in similar information for our waste and water. This doesn't really calculate anything, but it does start to get that information, um, start to gather those metrics. So we don't really have much information at the city about how much waste 
each individual buildings produce. So we're going to start trying to ask for that information and, and water as well, and sort of creating a space for staff to um, say, you know, we've thought about water consumption and this is how we're going to reduce water consumption in the building or at this event or through this proposal. Similarly with stormwater, we want to start thinking about that and how many square meters of new impermeable surfaces are we going to create? What's the new percentage of impermeable or impermeable services on the property. And you know, here's some strategies that we've taken to mitigate those impacts. Land use change is a bit of a tricky one. Oh, Mark, did you have a question? Yeah, you can go ahead. Let's see if, wonderful, mutes come off. Um, <clears throat> yes, with the impermeable surface, say the refit included uh, redoing part of the parking lot, so it became permeable. Is it possible mm -hmm. to enter a negative value for the square meter? Um, that's a great question. Um, Yes, like you could add in, and so this really just like copies that value into the report. So it doesn't, there's no calculation involved here because it's really just uh, prompting for information. And then you would, that would be a great thing to enter into here and say, you know, we've reduced permeable services by, by this many square meters because we've used these types of papers. Um, and so that would be more like qualitative information that we could add in as well. But yeah, that's a great example. Um, land use change. So this was a thing. That, so when we were developing this way back in pre-COVID days, we were trying to um, sort of figure how we could talk about land use change, because that's really one of the biggest uh, or earliest points in uh, emissions, you know, how, how, how many emissions are produced by a hectare of land. You know, is it agricultural? Is it high density residential? Is it industrial? Um, we never really came to a, a determination on how we could accurately calculate that. So what we decided to do for the time being was to start measuring that land use change and at least have that information sort of involved in this conversation. Um, and then at some point in the future, we may uh, be able to quantify the emissions associated with that land use change. But for now, we're just gonna gather that, um, what type of land use change it is and this, the area of land use change. Um, and then we've got trees and vegetation, so we can add number of trees removed, number of trees added, and any other mitigation measures involved in protecting vegetation or trees. And then we just got an other section. So this would have to be something that hasn't been considered here. You'd have to calculate the emissions on your own and enter them in here, and then it could add into the life cycle calculation. So what we've got in here, we've got a little bit of project info. We've got a few emissions from energy you hit save, and then that calculates the emissions. Um, this, is, this is a messy backend, but then it emails you a report. So I will stop sharing this and I'll show you the email report that you get as a result. Um, here it is. Oh, monitor. Oh, it's not working, is it? It was there, something was there. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, is that working? You guys can see that report. Okay, so this is just the information I just entered in. So you can see it was created at 550 and it emails out right away. Um, and so it calculates, you have your total annual emissions, 172 tons of carbon dioxide a year. Lifetime emissions are 5,188. Um, and then, yeah, resulting project lifespan is 30 years. And then it breaks it down. So you have 21 tons of emissions from electricity, you have 151 tons of emissions from natural gas, um, there's your annual emissions from energy exclusively, your life cycle emissions from energy uh, area of building, and then it gives you a emissions intensity of the building, which is the emissions per square meter of building. And then you can start to compare buildings. So like, you know, what, some buildings may be more efficient than others, have a higher carbon footprint than others, and this number will, will help you sort through that. Um, and then it shows you, so it used to have 260 tons of carbon dioxide emissions. Um, it will have 87 tons less per year and a life cycle reduction of 2,600 uh, tons of carbon dioxide a year. So that helps you sort of compare to previous projects. And then, you know, all these other fields that we didn't complete, um, but that would all be part of the report if it was relevant to your project. Um, and then all of that, anything that has an emissions impact would be totaled into the 
annual uh, missions up here in the summary. Yes, Councilman Trotsky. Thank you. I'm going to have tons of questions at the end of this, but my first one is, so do these reports, so no matter which department is filling this out, it's going to come to you? Uh, no. So it would come go to, it came to me because I entered the information in, uh, but it just automatically gets sent back to you, uh, the author. Um, right. And, but this all gets gathered in that back end. So that, that messy back end that you got a little tiny uh, preview of, um, so that's all going to be in a database in the back end that I will have access to. That you are gathering the information from to make your quarterly reports. <clears throat> and is staff getting training on how to read this technical information? Because there'll be a small percentage of staff that will understand this. Yes. So yeah, I'm start yeah doing training. I prepared guidance documents, so there will be there will be guidance on CityNet for them to review, and I'll be doing training with uh, the different departments individually. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. That's it for now. Yeah, so that's really, that's the, that's the overview. Um, there, I did want to also mention that uh, this is a pilot period, right? So we're going to initiate this November 1st. Um, there will be an adjustment as we learn um, and, you know, start to gather this information. We're not, part of this process is to um, understand that we need to start gathering these metrics. So, you know, the first few months, we may not have the information that we need to run the calculations because we've never had to ask for it before. So you may see an adjustment and a change over the, you know, over the year as staff start to ask for the right data and, and understand how to calculate that. And, you know, having that qualitative side of things, I think will be, will be important at first too. So we can talk about the impacts and just start thinking about that that climate lens and that environmental lens on our projects going forward. Yes, Councilman Dusky. Sorry, since since I didn't know, realize you were so close to the end of your your presentation. No. So I am I am uh, I am sitting here just so incredibly excited by this. This is amazing work. Thank you so much, Roselle, uh, Rochelle. This is you know you use the terms engaging, which is hugely important because you're getting the comfort. The, the conversation going throughout the corporation, something that has never existed. Um, and, and so that literacy piece is going to be huge. I am so excited about that. It is the first document in the city that I have seen the term life cycle actually put in writing and attached to. Um, and I know that will surprise many of you because we are a big corporation and we continually ask for life cycle costing, life cycle measurements, and we don't do it yet. So, so the fact that we have this is huge. The other thing that you might assume as a corporation and a city, which I did, is that we have a lot of quantifiable information and we do not. So all of this information that Rochelle is gathering is enormous. It's beyond what we need for, for our environmental uh, work and our sustainability work. It goes far beyond that. Um, this, is, this is really, really incredible. I'm so excited. Um, Rochelle, can you talk a little bit about, so it's been in a, is it November that it goes out just to the two departments? And that's when it implements and, and then we spread out. Can you, if you can highlight yeah. that? Okay. So the, that section of the staff report template will be in all staff reports starting November 1st. So that will be applicable to the entire city. Um, the quantification process, so having to calculate your emissions, is only applicable to public works and community housing to start because those are, it's a bit of a, you know, bit of a pilot. And those are the two departments that would have the most GHG impacts because they mon manage buildings and, and vehicles primarily. Yeah. So um, that's where we're starting. And then we'll, we'll, after a year of use, we'll, I'd like to, you know, talk to council. I'd like to talk to SPAC. I'd like, you know, get feedback from staff. Is this working for us? Is it providing the information we need? Do we need more metrics or fewer? And we'll, we'll revise and uh, adjust as necessary. So, so very excited. I will probably be asking you to speak at FCM on this. So, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Excellent. I'm glad you like it. Do we have anybody else with questions, comments, concerns? 
Awesome. Um, my Alicia. Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Alicia. Sorry, I missed. No problem. I was just wondering if I could ask a question around like your long-term goals and hopes for this. Is the intention to develop a benchmark over time, and then once you move past the discussion phase? that it becomes more of an assessment tool and a pushback on projects to go back and reassess and hopefully get closer to your proposed benchmarks? Yeah, so we do have, so we have a baseline emissions inventory that we did in 2018, and that will be um, actually, uh, there will be an update going to council uh, on that change uh, soon, November. Um, so we're gonna start tracking that. And this, yes, this tool is, is uh, intended to be, um, yeah, a way to see if we're moving towards our climate change targets and our emissions reduction targets. Um, it's not going to be um, sort of uh, fulsome or capture all of the emissions because a lot of emissions that get proposed and approved happen through the budget process um, and not through staff reports. So that's a separate <laughs> uh, discussion. But you know, maybe, yes, maybe long term. I know that some cities have a carbon budget, which is really neat. So, you know, that uh, you're allowed to approve, you know, X number of tons of carbon dioxide this year and every year that goes down so that eventually you get to your net zero targets. But, you know, so with this information and sort of with this foundation uh, and knowledge and uh, sort of ability to quantify, we may, we may be able to get there someday. Councilor Dowski, you have a question? Thank, thank you. Sorry, Alicia just brought up a very good point. Um, so I think it's important for us to remember that all of this great information will, first of all, council is going to need an education, right? Um, secondly, um, this still, council still has the decision to say yes or no to any of these projects. My personal hope is that they will see and understand the impact and make decisions, you know, that everybody here, I might be, you know, singing to the choir would be in favor of. Um, the, the thing is, though, this, if they do, if, if, if we as a body do not, we are now making it with the understanding of what that the impacts of that decision are. And I think having that front facing and that being public facing creates a very different um, conversation around that, that council table. So I, th I think that's really important to note. Hi, Rochelle. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I just also wanted to say this looks really great. Um, I love that there's the op, the the rollout for the entire staff report, so that you can get started with some um, some some text and get um, each of the departments thinking about the, these issues, even if they don't necessarily know how to quantify it yet. But it, it gets that um, gets them thinking in that um, that space um, and to to begin, um, you know, quantifying it um, internally, even if it, 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 they don't have a tool necessarily to do that. But um, I think that's really great. Um, I, I think the, the, um, the, the small rollout seems like a really good idea too. Um, I just had one question about um, I, the guidance materials. Um, if there's opportunities um, or, or links to calculation tools that already exist, um, specifically, um, I know like uh, community housing or, or, or other agencies that do deal with housing, they might think in terms of um, um, dollar amounts for how much heating they use. Mm -hmm. um, and if there's tools like that, that can sort of take that dollar amount um, and put in their fuel costs and then uh, and calculate it that way, um, you may sort of get to that same goal. So, um, you know, not necessarily that it needs to fit into your, your, your table yet, but just if they're um, quantifying it um, or, or thinking in terms of, of, of dollar amounts, if there's a way to, um, you know, um, to, to get those, um, those values in there somehow. So, mm -hmm. uh, but no, I, I, you know, other than that, I, I really think this is a great tool and a really good step forward. So thank you. Excellent. Yeah. And thanks for that comment. Yeah. That's a good point that, yeah, people do think about energy in different metrics, right? So uh, being able to be flexible. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll think about that and we'll see how we can work with that. Yeah. And uh, sorry, sorry, just to add, um, um, I think that, um, you know, it more so like if, if there's a, 
a, a set of links to to other guidance documents out there, right? It, it's not not so much changing the tool, just more so like just giving um, giving each of the departments every um, every tool at your disposal to to get them thinking about this issue. So um, yeah, this is great. Thanks. Yeah, that's a great point. And yeah, even just maybe how to read electricity bills sometimes, you know, like that, that exactly. knowledge is yeah. necessary, right? And like, where do you yeah. find this information? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, great point. Thank you. Awesome. Um, the only thing I wanted to note was that uh, in the spot where we talked about impacts, um, that it's both positive and negative to make sure that we clearly communicate that we are also interested in the positive. I think a lot of the times it gets um you start on this doom and gloom path and they they only want to know the negative impacts and i think it's important that uh when this is communicated that we stress that um we're also looking for the positive side of things um in terms of um if there are any uh anything being done to to help mitigate the impacts um but other than that if we have no more discussion seeing none um if I could please have a mover and seconder for um, the assessment tool and its implementation. Big words this late in the week. Uh, moved by David, seconded by Councillor Antoski. Um, and that is that the Environmental and Sustainability Policy Advisory Committee endorses the environment and climate change assessment tool and supports its implementation. Uh, moved and seconded. I do also need to make sure that it's agreed upon by everybody. It's been a while since we've been through the, the procedural stuff here. So no, no worries. So you just need to ask uh, if, if there's any further discussion um, and if, and then if there isn't any, then you can call the vote. Perfect. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of uh, us endorsing and supporting its implementation, seeing hands everywhere, we're good to go. All righty, item 4.2. Um, I do want to apologize to our presenters here. Um, if we can bring them into the room, please, Melanie, thank you. Um, I likely should have had you guys go first, but again, uh, my apologies as with the procedural stuff, um, it's all coming back to me now. It's just been a long time for us as a committee. Um, so thank you for waiting and welcome both Adam and Ken into the room. Um, so our presenters are through Atomic Spark. Um, this project started Oh, probably about a year ago now, October, I guess, October, November last year. Um, and it's just been uh, a long time coming and we haven't really met in a while. Um, so uh, I will give you guys the floor to uh, give us an update on our SPAC video um, and that it is a presentation. We are only supposed to have 10 minutes. So just a gentle reminder of that. And, and particularly know. to me. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much, Jonathan. And, and if I can, uh, just congratulations, Rochelle and SPAC on that uh, amazing um, tool and calculator and uh, the efforts to, uh, to bring that and realize a lot of the, the goals of the uh, declaration of the climate emergency. It's really exciting to see the, uh, that really getting traction and, and hitting the ground. So um, with that, uh, the SPAC video update. So just uh, this is a, an opportunity to uh, reconnect with SPAC after um, a number of months. Uh, the video that we're talking about is to actually celebrate and, and get conversation going around Brantford's uh, climate action plan, um, which includes that uh, amazing calculator uh, that Rochelle just demonstrated, but really, um, getting a conversation going in the in the community around uh, the climate action plan and, and really inspiring if we can or or sparking involvement and participation um, of the people of Brantford in the 
in the climate action plan. So there, our initial impetus was to create something that would spark that interest, that would create a buzz, that would be edgy, that would you know, ultimately generate that interest and, and participation in the program. What we discovered over the last few months is that within the budget that we had for a two minute video, we really weren't gonna achieve those goals. We didn't have the budget to, to go with something like the Chipotle video or some of the other videos that SPAC looked at at the time um, to really get something that was edgy and shareable on, on that level. Um, so in, in rethinking how we were going to do this, we've come up with, a, I guess, a high level concept of creating a number of care and share videos to target uh, social media users. So this is something um, that would be a series of, of short videos rather than one two minute video um, and, uh, and would, with the goal that it'll be topics that people would care about, that people will get involved in, and not necessarily people who are, you know, already environmental champions, but everybody um, connecting with them on a different level than that, and then being able to share how they can contribute to uh, Brantford's climate change plan, so our climate action plan. So with that, I'll turn it over to Adam to really describe what the 15 minute uh, videos would, would be like and where the concept is from a, from a video standpoint. Adam? Uh, thanks. I think we lost him. We lost Adam. Here he comes. <laughs> and he's back. Sorry, I'm not sure what's going on there. Can you uh, hear me now? It's working. Okay, sorry about that. I don't know if that was my internet or what. That was odd. Um, so uh, I'll just start that sentence again because you probably didn't hear it. But um, yeah, so our, our idea is you know, to create a, a series of short videos. We think um, you get the most mileage out of this, the most uh, value if we have something that come out regularly. So a, a, a series of short videos. Um, the suggestion was made um, by uh, Chris uh, Frye, who couldn't join us tonight, but he's been working with us on this, on some development and creative and that. Um, that, that 15 seconds is a great length. Um, for Instagram stories, particularly, um, and um, for TikTok, which he thinks would be be great um, platform for sharing these. Um, I don't know that we can cover all the content. We'll, we'll talk about the content in a moment. I don't know that it can all be covered in 15 seconds, so it might be a dream for some of the topics. But um, but to create a short a series of about, of about 15 videos, each of them about 15 seconds long, um, and something that will really um, something that people want to share that's interesting that that catches their attention. Um, and um, what we're looking to do is have um, dif different people appear in the videos uh, speaking about a topic. So um, I'm hoping maybe some of the faces I see here would be the, the people that could, could appear and maybe tackle a, a topic or two. Um, each video would be scripted. So we'd have a script developed ahead of time. Um, we'd start off with a question and um, we'll give you an example in a moment, but we'd start off with a question and then the person would speak and respond to that. And I'd love to film these in like a walk and talk type type uh, format in different areas of the city. So very dynamic, moving. Um, and then we could we could have the option to cut in other footage, other cutaway shots as as appropriate to to keep them fast paced, to keep them visually interesting. Um, and, and, you know, if we can inject some humor or or something and not that they're, you know, we'll be making light of the topic, but something that'll make it so that people want want to share these videos. Um, I think that would really help them uh, be, be successful and, and be engaging. Um, so we'd also work to tie these videos together uh, sort of thematically and stylistically. So if, you know, once you've seen a couple of them, you realize, oh, there's a series of these and there's, there's, there's lots of them out there. Um, and keeping them short, hopefully it's something that people will sit through and will watch and actually uh, want to maybe share with others. Um, so each video, as I was mentioned, would have a similar structure. We'd have a question up front and then someone answering the question. Um, Ken was kind enough to put together an example. Ken, do you want to share the example that you put together? Is that? Sure. This is, uh, so this is a very rough um uh, example, but for example, one of the questions that came up on the Ask Brantford Facebook page is, is Burger King coming back to Brantford? And so that's, as you can see, the top, uh, top question on our topics there, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. So that, you know, it would be something where the question is, is Burger King coming back to Brantford? And our answer would be something like, you know, we're not sure, but we hope it is because getting your Whopper locally instead of driving to Cambridge or Hamilton 
to get one will help reduce Brantford's carbon emissions. The fuel consumed in flying and transporting food around the world is a significant contributor to Brantford's or to global climate emissions. And buying more locally grown, more locally produced food is a great way that you can support Brantford's climate action plan. So, and that's it. That, that was already more than 15 seconds. Um, and the idea there is that we're just tying it into local food, to buying local shopping, local driving less, right, is the, are the, the general themes that we would work in. So clearly that script still needs some, some work that was put together pretty quickly and, and we really need to slim it down. I think this is one that we can get into a 15 second slot and with some good reactions in there and with somebody, you know, prepared to, to read it in a way that's a little bit more dynamic than what I just did uh, with my swampy background. Um, you know, I think that it can create some fun and, and some dynamism. And then at the end, again, it would have that common tagline and, and common video of, you know, getting involved. Every action counts. You can make the difference in Brant Brantford's climate action plan, something like that, um, you know, that, that encapsulates it into that common theme. So that was kind of the example. Um, Adam, if, do you want me just to go right into the list of topics? Yeah, so I think we should maybe take a look at the list of list of topics just to give you a sense of uh, what, and Ken, did you want to do this or do you want me to? It really sure, that's fine. Um, so we came up with a list of 15 uh, different topics that we could use. And this is one of the things that we want SPAC's uh, input on. Um, so we've given a list here. This is not written in stone. This is something that you know, certainly at this meeting, if there's another topic that we didn't come up with that you think is more important or better suited to this project than, than one of the ones here, um, please, I invite in the discussion and, and I'm not sure how we can do that in the, the delegation rules or the, the presentation rules, but, um, you know, the, the goal was for SPAC to be able to, to review this list and uh, if you have other ideas or something else that you would want to replace something with to say, yeah, rather than, you know, for example, wastewater reduction or stormwater reduction, um, we would rather have a video on renewable energy and we want to put renewable energy in there uh, instead. So you're welcome to add a new topic. You just have to strike one off the list um, to go with uh, with that. So while I'm while I'm talking about this, maybe the members of SPAC can think and, and just review the list as a whole. Um, but I think that the outline is, is pretty clear. The topic, the, the element of the Brantford Climate Action Plan is on the left, and then sort of a sample question is on the right. Now, the Burger King one was the genesis of this idea, so that's a, a good kitschy uh, question to ask to get us into local food and food miles. Um, you know, the other ones, we still want to come up with those kitschy questions. We just didn't put too much time into this until we get SPAC's uh, stamp of approval on the uh, on the concept as a whole but as you can see you know we're touching on concepts like how does my footprint affect climate change and trying to be you know a little bit funny about a footprint you know uh versus what is a carbon footprint and things like that exercising you know people's frustrations if i can't drive my car anymore how am i supposed to get around and leading a conversation in 15 seconds on alternative uh transportation modes and how to use them and and that it's not even so much about not driving anymore as, as finding ways to drive less um you know making our homes more inefficient or, or min <laughs> our homes more energy efficient um why doesn't Brantford have a green box program something that we hear a lot uh particularly for people that are moving to Brantford from communities uh, that do have organic waste diversion and talking about what we can do in the interim while Brantford works on developing its uh, organic waste diversion uh, down the road. Um, you know, wastewater, stormwater is a big topic that SPAC did a lot of work on a couple of years ago. Um, gas prices, you know, saving money by reducing carbon emissions. A lot of this is also meant to, um, I think it was uh, Mark's comment about the, the tool or, or um, no, Jonathan, it was your comment uh, about keeping a positive look on all of this. All of this is a very positive, upbeat video. These are how we can in our everyday lives make a difference that contributes ultimately to Brantford getting to net zero, net carbon zero by 2050. So very much they're intended to be positive. They're intended to be uplifting, upbeat and ultimately engaging and, and really having a, an essence or a feeling of call to action at the end, which may be you know, delivered through that tagline, uh, primarily through the sense of music of, you know this is urgent and get involved, but by no means the doom and gloom uh, uh, approach. These are all you know, how we can in our everyday lives and maybe things we don't think about um, reduce the carbon 
impact of our lives. I probably talked for the full 10 minutes right there. So I'm just going to cut myself off. because I know Jonathan won't. So, um, yeah, so I think out of this presentation, you know, what we're looking for is really, you know, is this a kind of concept that, that SPAC likes that, you know, the two minute uh, or the, instead of a two minute video doing these 15, 15 second type videos or 20 second videos, maybe for shareables. Um, what do you think of the list of topics? Are there other ones you would prefer? And uh, who wants to be in a video? Cheryl? Thank you. I have, a, I have a couple of questions and some comments. Is, is your intent to have these topics and questions finalized tonight? Because that would concern me a little bit. That was from SPAC's perspective, what we were uh, approaching just because we would like to be able to still film this year. And um, they're still pretty broad and we haven't written the script, but we need to write the scripts and, and do it. Um, um, yeah, that was our hope. So I'm wondering, and, and, and I'll wait to hear from the rest of the, the committee as well, but I'm wondering if, um, and Jonathan or Melanie procedurally, is there an opportunity for us to just take two days to, to look at them, think about them, funnel our thoughts through to Jonathan and and have that collaborated and back to you guys. I, I just, um, I so having said that, that's my question. I love this idea. We all know that we all have shorter attention spans now. So 15 seconds here, there is great. I want to see the cheekiness and the edginess of it. Um, and, and I know you said these were just thrown together. So I would like, so the green bin program, for instance, wording it differently saying, we don't have a green bin pro, uh, program yet. What do I do? Um, you know, so there's things like that. I'd like to spend a little bit of time to, to think about, but um, conceptually, I love it. Uh, and I think, um, I, I think will be very effective and much easier for us to get out there. And I love the idea of TikTok uh, incorporating that because we haven't done any of that. Um, so yeah, it's great. And and I'm I, personally, I'm all in. So um, just looking about that time, even if it's just a day so or if two. I could, if I could just add one quick thing before hopefully Melanie or, or Michelle somebody can give us a response, but um, the intention was not to lock the questions in stone. It's just the topic areas. The questions may be refined based on whatever the script development is. And like I said at, at the beginning, the intent is to get more of the, is Burger King coming to Brantford type element in your questions, as opposed to what was put with the rest of the topics. That was just to really, uh, identify more what we want in the topic, but we do want to do more work on the questions as well. So what we're looking for SPAC to approve is what are the topic areas for each of the videos. And then the treatment will involve the question and the script. Can we have the list up again? Sorry. I think it's a, I think it's a good range. I, I off, I'm not that quick of a thinker. So off the top of my head, I can't think of anything, any gaps there. We also tried to look at things that were, um, you know, beyond what people are already talking about. So I think renewable energy that I gave a, as the example is one that isn't there that many people might think, why aren't you doing one on that? But I think renewable energy is something that people are already quite familiar with, whether they like it or they don't like it. You know, there's a lot of discussion with that. I think we tried to do things or address things that Brantford's climate action plan is designed to do, including, you know, just what is the plan and, and how do we, you know, kind of grapple with it. You know, by the way, uh, you know, Rochelle has a fabulous video on the Brantford Climate Action page, uh, which I highly recommend sharing with your friends if they'll give her the five minutes to explain it. It's it's brilliant and does a fabulous job. Um, the, uh, you know, that's where we tried to go with this is where can we get, you know, good kitschy topics so that there's a, that there can be a relatively short answer to that obviously doesn't dig deep into 
uh, climate action, but is something that people can digest who aren't used to digesting this. Again, this is all geared at people who are, you know, already driving their monster trucks to the, you know, park to go to a concert or something like that and aren't really thinking about this and how can they think about it and where can they be involved? You know, maybe, uh, reducing their um, carbon footprint or their amount of driving might not be it, but they might be into waste reduction. They might be into, you know, reducing their utilities. There might be opportunities for them to compost at home. Um, so the idea was to really be able to connect with people on where they're at and uh, give them an introduction to one aspect of Brantford's climate action plan with that call to action. And, and really it's, a, it's sort of a big tent concept is we want everybody to be involved. We don't want people to feel excluded by this. It's about, you know, making an incremental change in your life. And then collectively, if we have, you know, the, uh, the uh, what is it, just close to 100,000 people that live in Brantford that all make, uh, you know, an incremental change in their lives in any one of these capacities, that's going to go a long way to hitting our 2040 goal of a 30% reduction and ultimately um, a 20, net zero by 2050. Sorry, 30 by 30, 80 by 40, and 100 by 50, right? So. All right, so I think ultimately um, this is on the floor as a video update. Um, now it seems to me that you guys are looking for a bit more of an approval on the topic list as well. Um, so that being said, um, to, um, I guess we can, Melanie, would it, Melanie, would it make sense to, um, put the motion on now and then, um, that would allow us procedurally to discuss it a little bit more? Yeah, so you so um, through the chair, based on the discussion here again, all, all, the, all the that was on the agenda was to receive the update. Um, you have a couple options moving forward. You can place that update uh, motion. You can have a mover and a seconder to place that on the floor, and it's simply going to be that the update is received and nothing. Uh, yeah, Atomic Spark, of course, can come back to another meeting with with more information. You can, uh, rather than that, you could put a motion on the floor to uh, that all comments made today be forwarded to Atomic Spark, and then again, that would facilitate um, another another visit from them at another meeting. Um, unfortunately, again, there was no uh, there was no documentation and there was no motion put on the agenda to approve anything, and uh, so procedurally, I uh, that wouldn't be very advisable. So, so those I, I think would probably be, again, uh, I'll leave that up to you as the chair, but those would probably be your two main courses either or to, uh, to, to, you can, again, once, once the uh, motion's on the floor, you can continue to discuss absolutely uh, either to receive the update or um, that all comments be forwarded, which is again, just some, kind of another variation of that. But, uh, but those would be your two probably preferable courses of action for today. Okay. So not that I'm looking for a way to get around something, um, but uh, in that spirit, I guess, I know you guys are on a bit of a timeline here and are looking to move forward with scripts and everything. So it'd be best suited if we could have some sort of not approval, approval of that topic list. Um, so I th think as long as, as, as SPAC, if, if we don't see any of those topics needing to be changed. Um, if that topic list is being presented as the topic list as part of an update, we could uh, accept this as an update and then that topic list um, would be um, something you're telling us you're doing as opposed to um, us having to approve. Um, and as long as we're not disapproving, we're not approving, but approving if that made any sense at all. Um, so that being said to the other members of SPAC, uh, of those topics, is there anything that anybody felt very strongly about changing? And then after that, Ken, not seeing any, Ken, you wanted to speak to that? Just, um, yeah, there for the committee and um, appreciate your approach and, and being able to find a way to provide the guidance. The, the goal in presenting the topic list to you tonight and our intention to move forward with that is we won't be able to change it after this meeting. If, if SPAC accepts this 
uh, proposal and we move forward with it, we're not going to be able to add a 16th video uh, down the road. So I would just want SPAC to be aware of that um, in uh, not approving, but moving forward with the presentation that we're making tonight and that everybody is aware of that in uh, accepting the update. So I'm, I'm happy to rephrase our update as this is what we plan to do uh, is these 15 videos, um, unless you tell us otherwise, but uh, please understand that if you are okay with that as our update and we move forward with that, there won't be an opportunity to change it later down the road. Okay, so I guess, it, sorry, go ahead. Just because we're gonna start working on the scripts, developing the scripts and, you know, testing all of that and, and, and getting that done, right? So that's why. So I, I guess the biggest thing before we um, put this on the floor and, and, and accept this update of, of this new course of action, um, the way I would phrase it is, um, or, or the way I feel about it, I guess, is that I don't think um, doing 10 longer ones or adding a 16th short one um, is really going to make or break the spirit of what we're trying to accomplish here. I think 15 is a good number because it, it really covers the, like that list of topics um, is, is not exhaustive by any means, but it, uh, it really hits, uh, I guess the high points that we need to, to communicate um, in terms of a public education, uh, public engagement campaign, which is where I, if I'm remembering correctly, this all started. Um, so I guess the biggest thing to, to consider for the members of SPAC would be um, if anybody is strongly opposed to going forward with a um, higher number of small videos, as opposed to the original plan of one, um, kind of called to action, awaken something inside of you plan that we had. Um, does anybody want to speak to that or are we all right with that? All right. So I think at this point, seeing that we, uh, don't have any more comments there. Um, can I have a mover and seconder to place uh, this on the floor that we are accepting the, or we as SBAC are accepting the video update? Moved by Mark, seconded by Councillor Antoski. Uh, so does anybody want to discuss this anything, anything further now that it's on the floor? Seeing none. Uh, hey, David's oh, hand is up. Sorry. Hi. Um, I was just wondering what the 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 schedule would be for um, for filming, et cetera. I can I can speak to that. Is that okay or okay? okay. Um, we're hoping to film uh, these outdoors, um, which would mean we'd need to film probably within the next month or so. Um, usually by the end of October, it's starting to look pretty. Uh, leak out there and we don't really want to be filming much later than that um so that's one of the reasons we're you know kind of trying to uh kind of move these topics along and, and get that going get some scripts developed so um if if i had to um maybe guess i would say it would be later october sometime mid to late october that we'd want to film which gives us a bit of time to develop some scripts and then um uh, we haven't talked about a delivery date but i would assume would be maybe november at some point um, for a delivery date. I don't know if there's anything specific they're needed for a specific date or if that time frame sits with one. Um, I'd be able to probably provide a, a more specific timeline um, at a future date. I don't know if that has to be at a meeting or if that can just be done anytime, but I'd be happy to put together a, like a production schedule based on this. Yeah, so I think for us, we would theoretically, um, are we still on the emergency basis to meet? Like have to have items before us type thing? 
so yeah, so we're still uh, we're still meeting on uh, a basis of of need, but of course, if we need to schedule a meeting next month to facilitate uh, moving this project forward, then that would be that would be an item that we could definitely have a meeting for for sure. Okay, um, so I think based on timelines and 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 not to uh, rush anything, I think uh, if you were to like based on the timeline Adam just laid out, if we were to see something for kind of final acceptance of the product at our November um, meeting, I think would, would kind of be the timeline that would make the most sense. Um, if that um, between what Adam provided and, and, and that kind of a timeline, if that answers your question, David. All right. Perfect. Um, yeah. And, and I think Adam, if there was, um, anything you wanted to communicate um, to SPAC, um, I think there's a way we can, um, I'd imagine there's a way we can facilitate that in terms of, of either just being a memo that we would accept at a meeting if we were to be meeting, um, as opposed to you having to provide something or, or, or attend and, and do some sort of presentation. Um, I think if you, um, were to send us something along those lines if we were to be meeting in October. Um, that would likely work in terms of a, an update so that um, SPAC is still kind of in the loop on what's going on with what we're, we're commissioning. And then um, it's not a hindrance to you guys in that you think you have to have something ready or, or anything put through production um, kind of in a rush timeline. Um, so that it doesn't uh, doesn't kind of handcuff you in that way. Um, That'd be great, yeah. If there's a possibility to to because there, yeah, there might be something to you know either question or something like that. I don't know how that's handled, but yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, any other further discussion on this? Okay, not seeing any. Um, I guess I'll, I'll call the vote um, that we're all in approval that the SPAC video update from Atomic Spark um, be received. And unanimously approved. All right, thank you fellas for the updates. Um, Best of, of luck working with those topics and your scripts. And uh, I think I speak for everybody when we say we're really looking forward to um, this version of, of, uh, of, of your, your product here. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Chair, may I just interrupt for one second before they leave? And, sure. and what my apologies and thank you for your indulgence, but you know, if, if Ken is leaving as well, I just, I, I was remiss in mentioning it earlier, but I, I wanted to also extend, um, and I think he's gone, our thanks to Ken, um, who started um, some of this work with, well, the, with the video as well, but also the climate change, um, the tool. So um, he, he was a big part of, um, of that, um, that impl implementation, or I guess that thought process, that vision. So I, I just wanted to make sure that uh, he was recognized. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Yes, I. they might not have been fully in the room, but they're still listed as attendees. So hopefully um, they were able to hear um, your comments there. Um, all right, so we do have, uh, one more um, item for consideration on the agenda. Uh, item 4.3, which is a climate action update. Um, so again, I'll welcome back Rochelle uh, and give her the floor to give us an update on the... Sorry, yeah. to give us an update on this. Yeah, it was just, a, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update since we're here um, to let you know what else is going on and what's coming down the line. So um, we are still working on a community climate change action plan um, that's been a little bit delayed. So I'm working with management to sort of figure out a new timeline for that, but um, hopefully it's not too much longer, a few more months. 
Um, we are also working on a corporate climate change action plan update. So we've had the corporate climate change action plan um, in effect for almost a year now. And so we're bringing a, an annual report to council in November to sort of let you know what we've been working on. But um, I will let you know that uh, we just installed some electric vehicle chargers in city hall. We've got seven um, new electric vehicles to the building department fleet that is fully electric. And they're gonna start uh, operating that uh, fleet in October. So that's exciting. We're getting a couple electric Zambonis at Wayne Gretzky Sports Center. So that'll be exciting. Uh, we had a good tree planting program this year. Um, so we'll just be providing some updates on, on the progress we've made on the corporate initiatives to date. Um, and and uh, so that will be coming to council as well as an emissions inventory update. So we had that baseline inventory in 2018 um, and the intention was to do an update every two years, although we'll gather the 2019 data and the 2020 data. So we have that just gathering some last pieces of data uh, and that will be uh, also presented to council committee of the whole um, operations and administration in November. So you can uh, look forward to that. Uh, I also would like to let you know that I do intend to bring the draft community climate change action plan report to SPAC uh, for review and comment. So uh, likely I would send that out in advance and you guys can review and, and provide feedback. So I'd like to make sure that we have plenty of time to do that um, before it goes to uh, committee of the whole for final approval. So, um, you know, watch for that in the coming months. <laughs> Uh, I think that's about it. I just wanted to, to let you know what else is on the horizon, so. Sorry, it's, <laughs> we have a half extra member right now. Um, perfect, thank you, Rochelle. Um, did anybody have any questions or comments um, for Rochelle? Awesome. Seeing, Just to thank uh, you. Just to thank you. Yes. Um, so that being said, um, can I please have a mover and seconder to um, that the climate action um, update be received by SPAC? Uh, perfect. Moved by Alicia, seconded by David. Uh, all those in favor? Perfect. Carried. Alrighty, just uh, yeah. Thanks, everybody. Um, great to see everybody again, and and actually be able to um, go over some of the stuff that uh, has kind of been brewing in the background while uh, it's, the world kind of stops. But it's nice to know that we do still have some stuff going. Um, there is one final thing that we have to do. It's just a consent item. Um, our minutes um, from February. I don't know if, even if there was mistakes in it, I don't know if any of us would remember. Um, I, I honestly didn't think it was all the way back in February that we met, met last. I thought there was a, a meeting in between there at one point, but um, that being said, as long as there's no error or omissions that anyone was able to see um, when uh, the minutes for the, or the agenda for this was sent out, uh, can I please have a move in or a seconder to adopt the minutes from February 18th of 2021? Moved by Alicia, seconded by David. Perfect. Thank you. All right. That being said, oh, hopefully sorry, we. we Sorry, we just need to do a vote on that. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, all those in favor? Good, good. Unanimous. Perfect. Thank you, Melanie. Um, yeah, so good first. It almost feels like, I don't know, I always feel like there's a reset with the school year, but uh, I, I guess that's kind of where we're at. So it was a good reset and nice to see everybody again. So thank you, everybody. Um yeah, that being said, the meeting is now adjourned. So hopefully to see everybody again in October. Where's mommy? Mommy is going Good to see, to see everyone. Excited about everything that's going on. We can see her later. Good times. All right. Do you want to wave quick? Hi, everyone.